Today, I'm gonna to show you a really slick workflow for editing a multi-cam music video in DaVinci Resolve. Let's go. By the way, if you wanna practice this, we have some sample media you can download and create your own music video with. Just click the link in the description. That'll give you access to our media vault. And one of these items on this list is gonna say music video media. Download that and that's going to give you all of these angles as well as a clip for the music. And you can try this out yourself. Pretty cool, right? So we're gonna be working on a music video from Todd Barrage, who is an insanely talented musician here on YouTube. And he does original songs, he does covers, he does Disney songs in emo style. I mean, the guy's great. He even did a full album cover of one of my favorite albums ever, Sing the Sorrow by AFI. And he was nice enough to let me give editing his newest music video a try because he actually just recently switched over to Resolve and was curious about the workflow. And so we have several different angles here of singing, playing guitar, drums, bass, and he did a great job shooting these. And the thing that's gonna make this really easy is he actually had the music playing in the background. And so the camera is picking up the actual music from the recording that he's playing through his speakers. And so he's just kind of playing along with the recording. When he's singing, he's just singing along with the recording. And so you can hear the music in the background of all of the cameras. And that's what's gonna make it really easy to sync up all of these angles. The only thing that we don't need to sync up is this emo.png, so I'll just drag this into a different bin. I'll select all of these clips, right click and say, create new multicam clip using selected clips. Now, what this is gonna do is this is going to put all of the camera angles into what's called a multicam clip, which is basically a timeline with multiple different layers. Each layer is a different angle, and it's gonna allow us to switch which camera we're looking at in between the angles as we play it back. This is just such a fantastic workflow. And we'll just call this multicam one, sure. And the one thing I'm gonna switch here is where it says angle sync, instead of time code, I'm gonna switch this to sound. What this is gonna do is it's gonna go through and it's gonna look at all of the audio for each of these clips. And because we have the music playing in the background of each of the clips, it's going to line them up. This is what's so magical, man. This all looks good, not multi-cam, multi-cam, there we go, and I'll hit create and it's going to analyze the content. So it's gonna go through and it's going to figure out all of those audio waveforms and it's going to sync up all 12 of these angles based on that waveform. I also have the music in here because even though that's not a camera angle, it's still something that we want to be synced up. And so we're just gonna let it sync up that audio. Okay, so it's went through and analyzed the content and it does say that the audio sync failed. Now, it says no match was found when attempting to align these clips. So there are a couple of clips here that it couldn't quite align, but this is two out of like 12 clips, so that's going to be okay. Let's hit okay. Now we have our multicam. I'm gonna right click on multicam and go to open in timeline. And let's just open this up and see what it's doing here. So here is our timeline that it made. And for the most part, a lot of these tracks are all lined up, which is cool. And if I were to play this back, I might just dim this audio real quick so it isn't so loud, but it shouldn't be offensive. Kind of sounds echoey a little bit, but it's all pretty much the same audio. Cool. And so we have all these different tracks here. And if I just hit D to disable each of these, we can see that all of these cameras are synced up. So a lot of these work pretty well. Now there are a couple of clips that don't quite match up and that can be for a bunch of different reasons. It could be that the audio is hard to understand. It could be that it doesn't have a consistent timing. Maybe the recording was paused or something like that. But what needs to happen next is we need to sync up these because right now they're not really working. So I'll just disable this and let's play this back. And let's just see what's going on here. So that seems reasonable. Okay, so it looks like it's just hard to hear it. And so let's just see if we can just kind of move this around. I'm gonna right click and change this clip color to something that's different just so I can remember which one is which here. And let's find our original audio. We'll just kind of sync this up here. 
just zooming in and I'm just gonna try and just line this up. And let's just solo this top track and this yellow track. Okay, so something's wrong there. Let's see what else is going on. And I can hit the greater than or less than buttons on the keyboard to try and get this lined up here. Seems like it's working. Okay, so that seems like that's pretty well lined up now. Let's turn off the solo for that yellow track and then let's just look at the yellow video track with the audio from the main song here. And we'll just spot check this. That seems like that's working great. Okay, so D12 millimeter works well. Now this other one we're gonna do kind of a similar thing. I'm gonna make sure this is on. Let's see what's going on with this here. It looks like he probably paused the recording here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we messed up. So that's why it didn't sync. So what we need to do is just chop this. Great, let's see what happens now. Make sure we're still going good the rest of the time. So it looks like this first take isn't great. So let's just grab that second take here. And we're gonna do kind of the same thing. We're just gonna try and line this up here. Be somewhere in there, I think. So we're just gonna solo this one. And this one. it's supposed to go right about there. It's kind of where it looks, what it looks like to me. And I'm just gonna try and match up these waveforms here, the little spikes in the waveforms. That looks right, okay. It's really worth it at this point to make sure that all of your angles are synced up. If they aren't synced up, then you're gonna have a hard time later. Everything's gonna be easy if these are synced up. This is the hardest, hardest part. But once those are synced, what we can do is we can just grab all of the audio. I'm just holding Alt and just dragging and just selecting the audio tracks and just hitting Backspace. Because we don't need any of that scratch audio. We just need the actual music and all of the video. And once we have all of that, I'm gonna select all of these, hold Alt and hit down. And then let's trim this to the edges of our song, just like that. That's okay. And let's bring this to the front, just like that. So now we have a timeline that just has all of the camera angles synced up to the music. And it gives you a really good starting point by just making a multicam sequence with these angles and it'll help you sync them up. But again, worst case, you can always move these back and forth just like you would on any kind of timeline to make sure they're synced up. And now that we have these all synced up, I would highly, highly recommend turning these into proxy clips. Here's why. What we're going to be doing here in a couple minutes is we're gonna be playing back all of these clips at the same time. And even if you have a really capable computer, there's still a lot of clips. It's playing 12 streams at a time. And so it's a good idea to switch these into proxies, which are just lower resolution, easier to play back versions with the exact same timing as the original video. So we're gonna do a couple things here. First, I want to set the format for my proxies. So I'm gonna go up to DaVinci Resolve, go down to Preferences. 
Under media storage under system here, I want to set my proxy generation location to be proxy subfolders in media file locations. This is going to make a folder called proxy right next to our original media. I think that's the best place to put proxies. Resolve automatically looks for that folder and goes and finds proxies when you open it up in a new project. And so it's just a really nice way to do it. So we'll make sure we do that. Now let's save. I'll go down to the project settings here, this little settings cog. And under master settings, kind of halfway down here, let's set our proxy media resolution. You could set this to something like 8th or 16th. I think quarter is probably good enough. Proxy media format, I like ProRes 422 proxy. This is going to be footage that's really easy for your computer to play back, and it's going to be really small. So it can play back 12 of them at a time and not have a bad time. That looks good. That's all we need. Proxy media format and proxy media resolution. Make sure that's all set. I want to go up to the media pool and go to my original footage. I'll select all of it, right click, go to proxy media, generate proxy media. Now I've already generated proxies for this. Once you have the proxies in here, you can use this little button right here to swap to proxy mode. And if these are all pink and they say PXY, that means that we're gonna be working with the proxies, which means that this is gonna be really, really easy to scrub. You're gonna have such a good time if you can scrub like that, all right? Make sure that you can get that good playback or else the rest of this is gonna be miserable, okay? Let's go to our media pool and I'm gonna right click on multicam one, this multicam sequence that we just made. And I'm going to nest this in a new timeline just by saying create new timeline using selected clips like this. And we'll call this edit and hit create. That's going to throw this multicam into a timeline. So we have this multicam clip inside of a regular timeline. Now, what's cool about this multicam clip is I can right click on it and I can go to switch multicam angle and pick any of these angles in my multicam. So if I want to switch to angle three, I just hit angle three like that, and that will switch that clip. So I can choose whatever camera angle I want. When I do that, it's going to get rid of my audio because it's going to switch to the third track of audio, which is blank. So I think what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna just grab my original music here. Let's just grab this and drag that down. This should be the same in and out as our multicam. Let's uh, right click, switch multicam angle to angle one. Let's just make sure that these are linked up perfectly. Looks good to me. And I'm gonna hold alt and select this multicam angle audio like that. Select this, hold alt and hit up on the keyboard. So all I've done is just replaced my multicam audio with just my music because that's all I'm gonna need for this. I don't need to be switching the audio at all. I'm just switching the video, okay? And there's ways to just switch video and leave the audio and everything, but it's more complicated than it needs to be. So we'll just put this in here. And now we're set up to do some magic, okay? Here's what we can do. I'm gonna double click on this multicam and close my inspector. And that will bring up the multicam here in the source viewer. And here I can look at all the different angles in my multicam, but confusingly, I can't really switch the angles. What I need to do is go down to this little button right here and go down to multicam. This is a viewer that looks almost exactly the same, but I can switch angles just by clicking on the angle. So if I wanna to switch to angle eight, boom, like that, that makes an edit right here and it switches this clip right here to angle eight. So at any point, if I want to change the angle, I can just click on a different angle and I can go through and change the angles like this. So that's really cool. But here's what's really, really cool. I can do this while I'm playing it back. So let's do that. I'll just grab a little piece right here. And all I'm gonna do is just click on the angle that I want to look at when I want to look at it. So let's just play this back. I'll just hit space bar. So let's switch to this. Yeah. I can switch these in real time as this plays back. And then when I play this back, all my edits are there. Isn't that cool? And so for this video, all I really need to do is play through the song and just click on the angles that I want. And that can be kind of our first rough edit. 
And so this is pretty much what I did to edit this music video is I just went through and played this back and really just switched angles. In fact, let's switch over to the footage that you can download. It's a little bit shorter. I'll just grab all of these angles, right click and say, create new multicam clip. For these, these all start synced up. I can actually sync it by the endpoint. Hit create. Here's the multicam, create new timeline. So here we'll kind of do a similar thing. We have our multicam. We open this up in our timeline. We have all the different angles here. And we have that multicam into another timeline. We also have our music track here, which again, we can just kind of overwrite that audio like this. There we go. We'll just switch to multicam. And now you can do this too. We have the proxies already made and you can play this back. And so try this out. This is fun. Let's just play this back and just switch the cameras. Okay. And so we have a good initial edit of our video. And what's cool is I can go to this music. I can right click and say, show music beats. And what that'll do is go through and analyze it and make beat markers. So this makes it a lot easier to switch on the beat. And so I can just grab any of these edits and just move them to the nearest beat to have these angle changes right on the beat. And then it feels pretty intentional. Now, are you always going to want to cut on the beat? Not necessarily, but it's a good starting point. Yeah, feels good. Now, see this angle, I really wanted to cut to him singing here. And so I can just be right at the beginning of this angle and we'll just switch to angle six like that. You can really easily go back and change things. Put this right on the beat. See, this one isn't great. Let's play this back and find a better angle. Like three. Yeah. And so this is a lot of fun. It actually goes really quick. Once you get everything synced up, you can go through and just click the angles that you want and then go back and adjust the timing, move things around. You can add more cuts, anything you want to do. And once you have all of the cuts in there and you have kind of your, your multicam figured out, then you can go through and adjust it just like you would any video. I'll just turn off our proxy because it's ugly. There we go. Those are looking nice. And from here, we can do all kinds of things like color grading and filters and adding camera shake or whatever you'd want to do. I think this is a really slick workflow for creating a music video. Big thanks to Todd Barrage for collabing here with me and for providing this awesome footage and music. Again, you can click the top link in the description to download this and try it yourself. I'll also leave a link right there. Okay. This has been so much fun. I feel like I usually am afraid of multicam because it feels really complicated, but it's actually not that bad. But don't be afraid to make those proxies because you want to be able to play this back really well. Okay. My buddy Dan made me some boba tea. That's pretty cool, huh?